Welcome to EMN5. Today we're going to be talking about posterior MIs. So what's the big deal about posterior MIs? Say you have a guy come in with chest pain, you get the initial EKG, you don't see this, so there's no STEMI. So everybody takes a step back, you go back to finishing that note you're working on, and you wait for the trips to come back. Well, the big deal about posterior MIs is that they don't look like this. Now in this one, you can see this is a posterior MI. There is some inferior infarct as well, and in fact, most posterior MIs do occur as an extension of lateral or inferior MIs. But less often, they occur by themselves, and that's why you have to know how to look out for them. So why do posterior MIs look different than all the other cool kids? Why are they the ones left out? Well, it's because of how we're looking at them, and we're looking at them from behind. We normally put the leads on the front. Um, so we see the EKG looking from the exterior to the interior part of the myocardium. And when we see the EKG printout from that orientation, it looks like a STEMI. When we look at the posterior wall with the interior leads, we see the electrical activity as recorded from the interior to the exterior part of the myocardium. So it's a mirror image. And the EKG reflects that. So a posterior MI from ear interior leads looks like ST depression. So in fact, the whole thing's a mirror image. You can see on the left there, that's an anterior or a lateral or inferior STEMI. And classically, you have ST elevation. You have your pathologic Q waves, which are the wide, deep Q waves. And sometimes you can have a T wave inversion later on in the disease. Posterior is a mirror image of the whole thing. You have ST depression pathologic R waves, I made that up, there's no such thing, but you have R waves that are wide and tall, and you can even have upright T waves. So next we need to figure out where to look. We're all used to this uh, split out, you see the inferior leads, the septal and anterior leads, and the lateral leads. Well, where are we looking for posterior MI? As I said before, we can't see it on anterior leads, that's why we're looking for that mirror image. And so we're looking for reciprocal changes. So there's this acronym, PALE, and it is to look for reciprocal changes when you have ST elevations. For example, if you have anterior wave ST elevations, you should be able to see reciprocal depressions in the inferior leads. So with a posterior MI that we can't see elevations, we should be able to see those depressions or the mirror image in the anterior leads. So here's an EKG and in the anterior distribution, we indeed see ST wave depressions, which represents the posterior MI. Now what if we have some obsession and we really, really want to see ST elevations for a posterior MI or we just want to confirm our suspicion? Well, we need some leads around the back so that we're seeing the posterior wall from outside to in. So here you can see the anterior leads and note that V6 ends at the mid-axillary line. In order to place the posterior leads, you're just going to continue them around the back. So you have V7 at the posterior axillary line. You have V8 at the tip of the scapula, and 9 just goes right next to that. And once those leads are placed, you can see that ever so subtly in the posterior leads of V7 through 9, you see those ST elevations. So three things to remember from this talk. Posterior MIs hide in the back. If you want to see the posterior elevations, you're going to need some posterior leads. If you don't have posterior leads, use the PALES acronym to remember that you have to look in the anterior leads for that mirror image which are ST depressions. And lastly, these are the changes you expect to see in V1 through V3, the anterior distribution. You're going to see ST depressions, those pathologic wide, tall R waves, and T waves that are upright. Thanks a lot for joining us on EMN5 today.